Are you tired of getting tangled up in the struggles of custom water cooling? Is it just too hard? Do you wish there was an easier way? Well, stay tuned for the following sponsored message from Fractal Design. You know, I think I just stepped on your foot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think water cooling is really all that hard. Hi, I'm Jay's Two Cents, Master Water Cooler. And I'm Josh from Fractal Design. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk today about the Celsius S36 and some of its expandability properties and show you that, you know, you can have some custom cooling without all the headaches. That's right, it's not that hard. Even Nick can do it. <laughs> now obviously I would prefer custom water cooling, but Josh, maybe you could tell the audience a little bit about the Celsius S36 expandability and why they might consider this. That's a very good point, Jay, and I'm glad that you brought it up. You know, liquid cooling, especially open loop, can be very intimidating. There's fittings, there's blocks, there's pumps and reservoirs and all those sorts of things. And you know, it can be kind of hard to figure out exactly what you need. So some people want to start off with some simple solution, you know, AIO. I actually have one of those ready to go right oh. here that we kind of assembled off camera before we started today. You're always prepared, Jay. I was a Boy Scout. But you know, it can be very intimidating to start your own open loop build. Some people want to start and then have the system grow with them. And with the Celsius S36 or S24, you can do just that. Now we actually did a video earlier about how to install this. So if you guys want to start there, go ahead and check out that video. But the focus today is showing you just how easy you can actually open this up and add some parts to it. So what do you say we get started? It sounds like a great idea, Jay. Transition. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this average PC you might find in a typical home. It's air cooled on the CPU. It's got an air cooled GPU. And we're going to convert this over to awesome by using this guy right here. So what do we need to do to actually get started? Well, I'm glad you asked, Jay. Um, we could start with how about a reservoir? Okay. We're going to need something to put fluid in and make it easier to bleed. So we got one of those. Sounds great. Uh, graphics card. Graphics card. Absolutely. Otherwise, what's the point of expanding it? So there's our GPU. What do you think? What's next? Uh, well, we need a way to connect all this together, right? So how about some fittings? I always carry around fittings in my pocket. Hold always on, handy that. to have. There you go. Never leave home without it. Okay, what are, what are we missing? I feel like we're missing um, something. Tubing. Oh, yes, absolutely. We got some of that right here. Again, uh, what about tools? What do we need tools-wise? Uh, maybe a wrench. Okay, why do we need a wrench? Uh, we want to loosen the fittings and tighten them up securely. Got one of those right here. What Wonderful. else do we need? Uh, a screwdriver, perhaps. Oh, got one of those too. Funny. Okay. Um, Something to cut the tubing. Scissors, got it. What's the first thing we have to do now that we've got our tools and our parts? I'm glad you asked. The first step is we're gonna drain the current radiator. That way we make room for our expansion. Oh, you mean we can't just reuse the fluid that's already in there? You could reuse the fluid, but there's not gonna be enough. Since we're expanding, we're gonna have more surface area, more tubing length. So we wanna make sure that it's completely full so we don't have any nasty air pockets in there. So then we're actually missing something. Coolant. I'll, I'll get it, I'll be right back. Ah, there we go. That'll do right there. Now, the fluid that we're using right here is actually a fluid that's designed for mixed metals, like aluminums and coppers and nickels. So you want to make sure any fluid that you use is going to have some sort of corrosion inhibitor. That's probably the most important thing moving forward. Okay, we've got everything now. We need to start draining this. Well, do you think we should maybe get someone who's not involved or used to this to try this to see how easy it is? I think that'd be great with you being the wonderful super supreme master liquid cooler that you are. It's true. Things like this are always going to be easy for you. Yeah. Maybe we should grab somebody from the audience uh, if anybody out there wants to try and show just show, how easy it is. Show of hands. Show of hands out there. Oh, let's keep looking. Anybody out there? Oh, there's a lot of people interested, Jay. <laughs> hey, how about you with the blue hair? Aww. Okay, so you have never done anything like this before. Never. Never. Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get you to, we're gonna need something to actually put the fluid in, right? Yeah. One, two, three, two. Okay, we got a bucket there. Okay, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take these pliers. Okay. And you're just gonna loosen this fitting right here. Now, does it matter which tube they actually remove? Yes, actually what we wanna do is the PWM cable runs through this tube right here, the tube on the right. And we wanna keep that there so you can still have your fan hub working so that the pump can communicate with the fans, give you the best possible cooling. And that's also the outlet from the pump. Correct. Which is most so, important. Exactly. So when you're running coolant out of a reservoir into a pump, we wanna make sure we're getting fresh, cool water coming in through the inlet. So we are gonna remove the inlet tube. Okay, and what I want you to do is take the pliers, put them on the grooves of the fitting right there, and just give that a little turn to the left so that it's loose. There you go, just like that. Now we, basically the easiest part to do next is just do it by hand. And if you hold this upright, you won't get as much fluid spill, but you want to use a bucket or something underneath. That way you don't get too much of it falling down on your workspace. Okay, now that you got that loose, go ahead and just take it all the way off. There you go. Oh, look at that. So go ahead and hold the pump up. 
that we can get everything out of there. Mmm, I can smell the anti-corrosives. Okay, it looks like we have all the fluid drained out of the radiator. That wasn't too hard, was it, Anna? No, not hard at all. Okay, Jay, what should be the next step? Well, you know, this is the part where you'd probably want to plan out your loop. Now, it doesn't matter if it's an AIO that you're expanding or it's a custom loop. The only thing that truly matters in terms of order is that your reservoir is directly feeding your pump. So this is the tube right here, whether we keep this tube or take it off. We're going to connect that to our reservoir. And then the rest we can just kind of plan based on what is aesthetically pleasing. Sounds good. Should we go to the case? Let's do it. Okay, so let's hear a round of applause for our assistant, Anna. Thank you very much. Now, I've gone ahead and taken all of the air-cooled parts out of the system to prepare for our installation here. Now, what is actually supported? Like, what CPUs can we use with this? Actually, you can use all the latest and greatest CPUs, including AMD's new Ryzen processor. Oh, cool. So it's going to have no problems attaching to our AM4 socket here with our Ryzen 1700X. That's correct. The bracket actually ships in the box. That's right. Ryzen support out of the box. As some people have already noted, the tubing doesn't actually remove from the pump. Why is that? It's for added durability, Jay. Okay, so we've got our inlet tube right here loose from the radiator. We're gonna have our tubing, basically the route is gonna go reservoir to pump, pump to radiator, radiator to GPU, which we have to connect with tubing, and then GPU back to the reservoir. Sounds, Sounds good. Easy enough? Okay, let's go ahead and start by, well, let's put our graphics card in first. That sounds like a good idea. Now, because we just drained this system, there's gonna be some residual moisture, right? A few Correct. drips. We don't want that happening inside of our case. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add the tubing to the radiator now and get that locked down. That way, any drips that might occur can just go ahead and, well, not hurt our component. Now, that's a standard G quarter thread, right, Jay? It is, but the only thing you have to be mindful of is making sure that the sizing of your tubing and your fittings are the same. Now, we're gonna be going with a soft tubing here because well, we have to retain our soft tubing right here with the pump, so you could technically do a rigid portion of this loop. It just makes more sense to use some sort of a soft tubing. So now that we've got our tubing on there, and we're not worried about any drips inside the system, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the radiator in place. Now, I wanna put the tubing in the front. I find that there's more clearance doing it that way, and I just it's just more of a preference thing. You can do this however you want, but yeah, this is pretty much gonna be one of those things that is purely at your discretion. Now, while Jay finishes putting in the last screw on the radiator, I'll go ahead and get the reservoir ready. That's the next item you want to install, correct, Jay? Absolutely. Now, the nice thing about the Define S is it actually has integrated reservoir mounts right on the back side of the case, including brackets if you need them. Now, I'm just going to use the brackets that are actually included with the reservoir that I'm using right here, but you definitely have some flexibility if you need it. Now, while Jay does that, one of the important things about the Define S is the fact that you do not have to get your reservoir mount perfect the first time as he obviously did not. <laughs> and as we can see, Jay is finishing mounting the CPU block on the AM4 socket AMD Ryzen processor. What next, Jay? Well, you know, we're not that far from actually being done. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the tubing here coming out of the reservoir, or the radiator, and we're gonna to kinda of think about order here. And like I said, the only thing that really matters is that our reservoir is feeding our pump. Now, obviously it looks a little bit off axis there in terms of height, but we'll talk about how to combat that in a second. So. The way the order is gonna be in this loop is it's gonna go from reservoir to CPU pump, CPU pump to radiator, radiator to GPU, and GPU back to the reservoir. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that the standard tubing length on the Celsius units is ample enough to reach almost any mounting location inside the case. It's actually pretty long. All right, looks like we got our tubing in there and well, everything's hooked up now. Look at that. Well, that's great, Jay, but uh, what are the paper towels for? Well, I got wet the blood off the reservoir. <laughs> 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 I bled on it. Don't use the paper towel. Well, the, sh the fittings were sharp, okay? I bleed in every bill. I, I hurt myself. Because we've actually opened up this kit and now we've put some parts together, leaks are always a chance, a minimal chance, but it's possible. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna line some of the components that we've just put together with paper towels nearby so that we can check for leaks. Sounds great. Does that make it easier to identify the leaks or just to soak up the liquid or how does that work? Uh, actually both. You can identify where the leak is coming from and if you have a colored fluid, it actually makes it easier to spot on the paper towel. Now there's actually another device we like to use which is just a 24 pin PSU jumper so that we don't have to turn on the whole system but just the power supply to get the pump going so that we can actually start to get our filling and our testing which I think we should do next. Sounds great. Well, we got some fluid in there. Everything seems tight. We're not seeing any leaks. I think it looks pretty good considering the fact that it's an AIO turned into a custom loop. 
Well, I agree, it does look pretty good, Jay, but I'm no expert here. I just don't see how that water's gonna make it into the pump. You know, that's a very astute observation, Josh, because he's right. You do have to have the reservoir higher than the pump to be able to feed it and priming the system. Now, there's two things you can do. You can actually rotate the case like this and get the reservoir higher than the pump, and uh, it's easier to prime that way. Or what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna lay the case flat on its back. We're gonna unhook our reservoir from the bracket and because we have flex tubing, we can actually just hold it upright, which is gonna give us the height that we need. Well, as you can see, Josh, we've got everything together. We've got our fluid in there, the lines have bled. I've even added a little bit of blue dye for that fractal design touch. Everything's staying nice and cool. The CPU, our 1700X, is sitting at right around 55C under load. And our GPU right now, which is a GTX 1080 under stress test, is sitting at a comfortable 47C. Not bad. I think that is pretty impressive, but you know, you shouldn't take our word for it. Can we get a member of the audience up here to put their hand on and tell Sir, us what they think? how about you? Come on up. Don't, okay, watch the stairs. Yep, okay, yep. you're good. There Don't you go. Should I get right on in there? Oh, that's so cool. So cool. Well, I think that about wraps it up today. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Is there anything you'd like to leave with our audience members here before you go? Well, Jay, I think you did a great job expanding the loop, and I think it just goes to show that you can start with something simple like an AIO and let it grow with you and come up with something like this. And you know, at first I was kind of like, I don't know about the black tubes, but I kind of like the fact that we have two different colors here, one for the CPU and one for the GPU. Give it a little bit of that custom touch. Very minimalistic. All right, well guys, thanks for watching today's video. Obviously, we're just having a little bit of fun, kind of poking at that whole infomercial thing, but honestly, this is something take, worth taking a look at. It's a 360, you can handle GPU, no problems, and uh, it doesn't really cost a ton. That said, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. While supplies last. <laughs> the blood sacrifices must be made. Blood? Like, don't look at me like that, dude.